may not be suitable for all audiences. Excuse me, everyone, if I can have your attention, please. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Scholars, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. As you hopefully know by now, I'm a professional artist, I'm a master educator, and I attempt to provide the best in our historical content. If you like that content, make sure you like, share, subscribe, interact, do all those cool things that help the channel grow a little bit, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. Thanks. One doesn't speak unless one knows. Johannes Vermeer, perhaps one of the greatest painters of his generation. Today, as you know, because you clicked on the video, that's exactly what we're going to do is do a little bit of a dive into the art and the career of Vermeer. And you will see every single one of his works in this video. So, let's get it underway. The Dutch Baroque painter, who was primarily known for his interior scenes, Johannes Vermeer, is considered one of the greatest Golden Age painters, perhaps second only to Rembrandt van Rijn, the master Baroque painter and engraver. But regardless of that, Vermeer's influence on art is unquestioned. But let's start at the beginning. His father was a silk worker from Amsterdam, but would eventually migrate to Delft, where he became an art dealer. After his father's death in 1652, his son, Johannes Vermeer, took over the family business. He was married and had 15 children, can you imagine that? Only four of which died fairly early in life, and to this point, he's just working as an art dealer. It is believed that artistically he may have been self-taught, although we're going to put an asterisk next to that because of his method of work, but we'll get back to that. This is not the only point of his life that's a little bit unclear. There are several details of his life that are a bit unclear. One theory on his art training is that one of Rembrandt's pupils, Carl Fabritis, may have been an instructor of his at some point. Perhaps also it was Abraham Blomart, who was a follower of Caravaggio. Side note, in the 1930s and 40s, many fake Vermeers hit the market by a forger, Han van Meegren stealing nearly $30 million in modern money, and his forgeries were discovered after World War II, after selling fake Vermeers to Nazi Hermann Goering, who was something of an art collector thief of sorts, resulting in his conviction of fraud, and Goering was seeking these because Adolf Hitler was attempting to create a Führer museum, and this museum in Lenz, Austria, was with the goal of including every single Vermeer painting, which is believed to be 36 to 34, including these that you're going to see in this artistic montage.
Over the course of his career, Johannes Vermeer would create 36 to 34 paintings, but none of these are signed, and only three are dated. And over time, his work became a bit obscure, but the market in Vermeer would be improved by photography. You see, some 200 years after his death, he was completely obscure. But his work saw a huge reemergence in the 19th century with the advent of photography. This renewed visibility by Gustav Friedrich Wagen and Anthophil Tory Berger by publishing Vermeer's works and his essays on his life in 1866. I mean, that's f***ing history, man. That... When I learned that, I was just like, and I could, I, I dove into it. Now, I wanted you to put a pin on a piece of information, and that was in regard to his style of creation. Now, here's why that was. Vermeer would only create a handful of subject matter types, generally portraits and small room enclosures. And these were primarily set in two different rooms in his home. So it is very possible that he would use a camera obscura, a device that was used and became very popular during the Renaissance for capturing an image and projecting it down to a canvas or board. And then you could just simply trace the outline instead of really having to spend all of the time sketching and drawing. You could just get that onto the board very, very quickly. Renaissance artists such as Leonardo da Vinci were very known for using this sort of device. More contemporary artists like Norman Rockwell would use projections of images to get a more lifelike image down onto the canvas or board. His use of this technology was probably what he did because there is no proven art training. He wouldn't have been able to draw that well if he wasn't using some sort of an aid. He never created a sketch. He never did any sort of drawing. He never did any writings on the works that he was doing. There were no eyewitnesses to his working or progress of work. He never created a self-portrait. And these reasons lead us to believe draw the conclusion that he would use a camera obscura and so Vermeer was also utilizing the science and the technologies available to him to aid in the execution of his works. Now some might call that cheating, some might call that working smarter not harder. I'm not going to weigh in on those fine points but just know that there are people with very differing opinions of the use of camera obscuras and other projection type devices. I got bad news and bad news. Give me the bad news first. Johannes Vermeer would die at the age of 43 in 1675, leaving behind a legacy of art and art production. And although his body of work is relatively small, or what exists to this day is relatively small, he still had a very profound impact on art and works like his Girl with a Pearl Earring are very influential as one of the most parodied pieces of artwork in the world world and so because of that parody over and over and over again it's very clear to see that he had a definite significant influence on art and we can appreciate him for his vision for his composition and for the works that we can still enjoy and appreciate in collections around the world now i hope you enjoyed that as much as i enjoy being able to bring it to you Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. So, okay, uh, today we're going to talk about... When, uh, does we, when does it start? What, the show? Yeah. It did already. <laughs> <laughs> well, decent. You're really paying attention, I didn't eh? know, yeah.